Sri Fateh. So we're on party 27th today and um, let, let me quickly read it um, and then we'll go into the exploration and the, the commentary. So dar keha, so kar keha, jit bai sarb samale, vaje naad anek asankha, kete vavan hare, kete raag pari syo kayan, kete gavan hare, gave tono paan paani besantar, gave raja taram duare, gave chit gupat likh jane, likh likh taram vichare, Gave Isar Barma Devi Sohan Sada Savare Gave Ind Indasan Bate Dev Tiantar Nale Gave Sid Samadhi Andar Gavan Sad Vichare Gavan Jati Sati Santoki Gave Vir Karare Gavan Pandat Padan Rakisar Jug Jug Veda Nale Gave Mohaniya Man Mohan Surga Mach Pyale Gavan Ratan Upaye Tere At Sati Rath Nale Gave Jod Mahabal Sura Gave Khani Chare Gave Khand Mandal Var Panda Karkar Rakhe Tare Sei Tudno Gave Jo Tud Pahavan Rathe Tere Pagat Rasale Hor Kete Gavan Seme Chitna Aman Hor Kete Gavan Seme Chitna Aman Nanak Kya Vichare Soi Soi Sada Sat Sahib Sacha Sachi Nai Happy Hosi Jaina Jasi Rachna Jindra Chai Rangi Rangi Bhati Karkar Jinsi Maya Jin Upai Kar करवे कह कीता आपना चिफ्ट इस दी वड़ियाई जो तिस पावे सोई करसी हुकम ना करना जाए सो पात साहो साहा पात साहेब नानक रहन रजाए In this party Guru Saab is asking or responding to the question where is the door and where is the abode of Vahigru? We have been told over and over by Gurbani, by our Gurus, by the sages, that our goal is to merge with Vaheguruji, to go back and merge with the same light from which we have emanated. That is our true ghar, that is our true home. In this body, Guru Sahib is asking, where is that house? If we have to go there, if we go somewhere, we need to know their address. We need to know how to get there. We need to know what it looks like so we recognize it. So there is the house and then there is the door. Which is the door through which I enter? How do I know it's the right door and it's going to lead to the right part of the house? Do I want to enter through the back door? You know, which is probably, I don't know how important that is. Or like some eminent, honored guest, am I going to enter through the front door and led to the to the sanctum sanctorium or the, the most beautiful living room. Where, where do I go? How do I know? Where, where is this house? I want to know. You keep talking about it. The, the, the word ghar has uh, several meanings and the three that come to my mind are ghar is our body. This is, this is ghar. Ghar is the physical place where we live and ghar is also nij ghar or such khand where we ultimately go. That's the house that we have to go to. This is the house which has the temple of God, the pilot light within us. Then there is the place where we live, the physical place and, and the journey is to the Nijkar. And so where are the doors? Which is the door that we are going to enter through? So door is, is very significant because it it's the entryway, it's the passageway. Um, Harmanda Sahib has four doors as we all know and they face so many different directions but there is one pathway that leads to the inner sanctum. All these doors on the outside, the parikarma that surrounds it and then one pathway that leads to the inner sanctum. Um, Guru Nanak Sahib in one of his prayers, in one of his invocations to God has said Jit Dwari Ubre Tite Ubar Whichever door your devotees seek you from help them, you know, lift them, elevate them, save them. So doors seem to be the inspirations that we get from different traditions. 
uh, path. the pathways, you know, the, the faiths, the, uh, I call it the inspiration because we could be, uh, be inspired by Gurbani, we could be inspired by Vedantic literature, we could be inspired by the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, these are all beautiful scriptures and our inspiration, our, our, our motivation to walk on the path may come from different sources and they are all acceptable in Guru Nanak's um, home because he says Jit Dwari Ubrete Tele Ubhar we're not the kind of people who say that we have a monopoly over God that if you don't believe in this path then you are an infidel or you'll burn in hell we say Jira vi door to tusyana hai but oh door ke ho jave oh kera door hai right now interestingly just like this nij ghar is a ghar, I mean, the, the, our body is a car, the temple of God. There are nine doors in the body, and and the Guru says that na duare pargat kiye dasma gupat rakhaya. Now, what are those nine doors? What is a doorway? A door is is a passageway which through which you receive something and through which it passes. It's an entryway. You come and you go. So the, the nine doors are the two eyes, the two nostrils, the mouth, the two ears, and the two doors, one for elimination and one for, for um, procreation. So these are the nine doors that are visible that are there in the body. Daswa Gupatrakaya, the tenth door is supposed to be here, the crown chakra at the head, at the top of the head. And this is called the Dasam Dwar. Now this is the door in the body through which your soul rises, through which, which is the, the crown chakra, which is the temple of the God where all your energy from all the, the, the lower chakras has to elevate and reside here and through this is where you're going to enter the Nijkar. So this is my understanding of this. Where is that gate, the Guru says, where is that dwelling, where is that home where Vaheguruji abides and how do I recognize it? And the answer he gives is, is um, several, several pointers. And he says, Vaje nad anek asankha kete vavarhare. There is music in that in that house he says constantly playing all kinds of instruments there are lots of singers there are lots of ragis there are lots of people who are singing the praises vaje na this rhythm this music there is um, beautiful music now this concept of music in guru's home is elsewhere prevalent elsewhere visible in gurbani as well anad sunova dupagyo listen to that unstruck melody Anad Sunovad Bhagyo Sagal Manorat Pure Par Brahm Prapaya Uttre Sagal Vishen that, that, there is that unstruck melody that nod that pervades in the in the in the universe that we hear in when our consciousness is elevated when our experience reaches that that level where we can hear that sound and that sound is not heard by turning on a radio or a TV uh, or, a, or a CD or through our ears either that nod is there and has to be heard at a different level of consciousness it's a different experience so oh nod hai okay. Vaje nad anek asankha kete vavan hare kete rag parisyo kayan kete gavan hare. There are lots of rags that dwell there with their paris is parivar over here with their families. So rags are are a composition or a, cons a constellation of sound set in a certain way and each rag and rag mala describes this at the end of Sigur Granth Sahib that each rag has its raganis, its consorts and its children and uh, I heard somewhere that when you add up the rags and the raganis and the children they, they add up to 84 that the Guru mentions in, uh, in Ragmala. There are, if you, there are 30 Raganis and 68 children and all of that. And according to some people that refers to the 84 um, uh, species that we have to go through. But you know I'm not going there. But basically the Rags 
are, are supposed to have their own consorts and their own children and their own families. So the Guru says, all the rags dwell. On, in other words, all the rags come from that space. They are created from this nath, from this source that that bursts forth in these these melodies, these compositions. Kete rag parisyo keye, kete gavan hare. Rag parisyo keye, kete gavan hare. Gave tu tono, pan pani besantar gave raja taram duare. So I just want to point out that this this body is also there in Rarasa. Remember, but it, there are subtle differences. There are subtle uh, um, variants. Instead of tono, it says tudno. Somewhere there is instead of pat sahib, it says pat sahib in the last line. So why are those differences? You know, we can explore them, debate them, discuss them some other time. But when I uh, read this, gave tono, I remember that rasa which and that gave tudno. So gave tono means the same, that your praises are sung by the wind, the water, the fire. Gave raja taram duare. Also, all Raja Taram Duare, all the kings and the righteous kings that sit at your door, everyone is singing your praises. Now, how is it? If we can, if we just pause and think about it, how is the wind and the water and the fire? How are they singing the praises? How are the rags and the ragnis? What is the guru pointing to over here? Instead of leaving it to the very last line, what I want to submit here is that they're all in his hukam. That everything is bound by the hukam, like the nature of fire. It, it's when you watch fire and it's contained in a fireplace. It's beautiful the way it sparkles, the way it goes up. Fire always rises. But when you... I think of it as all of his creation is a symphony. Yes, beautifully put. That music is the same as this, the uh, mystical music that you hear when you are at that stage in Simran. And you hear that music that you say is an expression of that symphony that beautiful very well put so also i think it, it refers to the fact that everyone is in tune with that and as human beings who have the will to do or not to do animals do it naturally nature does it naturally but we are people that have that can choose to be in tune or not so what is the nature of Pavan? Pavan flows, right? Fire goes up, water flows down. So all these are contained. They're all in their rhythm. They're all flowing according to their nature. They're all bound by what the Kalpurak can, you know, contain them in their in their rhythmic sphere. So yes, they are, they are symphonies. Thank you for that word. They are symphonies. There's an amazing orchestra and and we try to capture that. That's why I think um, Rajiv led me to this thought. Tan Sen said that Sur Di Sadhana is Parmeshwar Di Sadhana. Because all sounds emerge from that, that rhythm, from that, that source, that fountainhead of the Anad Shabad. So, um, if you hit the space in the nature terms, then you'll go down the line. Right, I've. Um, space once. Okay, me, I have uh, Gave Tono Pan Pani Besantar, Gave Raja Taram Duare, Gave Chit Gupat Lik Janin, Lik Lik Taram Bichare. Now, Chitra Gupt is supposed to be this entity that writes our karmic progression in pictures. So, Bani here is very contextual. It refers to some of the prevalent beliefs of the folks that were living at that time in that country, India, where it originated. But here is another, here is another nuance of Chitra Gupta. Chit is consciousness. Gupta is hidden. Right? The consciousness that we're not even aware of. So everything that is going on in our consciousness is recorded 
not just our actions, they are recorded, but our thoughts. All the, all the stuff bubbling in our mind. Because you know what? Thoughts lead to actions. And actions become our karam. And this chitragupt, this consciousness that is not very apparent when you are operating in pilot mode. It's recording everything. So you have to purify, we have to purify that consciousness and, and distill it so that our lekha is all golden and not weighed down so that we are able to hear that symphony without having to go someplace and listen to the symphony that is a shadow of that, that amazing nad. Chitragupt Lik Janan Lik Lik Taram Bichare Gave Isar Burma Devi Sohun Sada Savare. So, have I skipped a line here? You should just highlight the line you are reading. You know, uh, you hit the space bar. No, I'm, I have come down. Okay, I have to go back up. Go back. Yeah, Once you get to it, then hit the space, and then from there it will, and when it returns, it will go down with you one line at a time. Oh wait, you know what? I was looking elsewhere. Gave, okay, got it. Gave tono paan paani besanta. Click jane li karam vichar. Which I got it. Gave isar. Gave isar. No, it will turn into brahma. Gave isar varma devi. So on sada savare. So isar is supposed to be Shiva. Isar Brahma Devi. The Brahma Isar. These are supposed to be the the creators, the destroyers, the preservers the three entities, uh, the three godheads that um, were referred to by um, the mainstream populace of India. And, and Guru Nanak Sahib here, I think, is pointing to us that all these representations of Vaheguru, all the Isar, the, the, the Shiv, the Shiv is the destroyer, the creator, the preserver, the destroyer. These are aspects of God. And we have named them as Isar, Brahma, Shiv. And they are also in, in Vaiguru's abode, in that Nichkar. In other words, there is a formless, there is an energy beyond the ones that we see as representations of it. Would you have some thoughts on it? I think these are representative figures. And, and the formless, the all-prevailing entity is all of these combined. It is the, there, are, there is no separation in, in ache. It, the, that force is the creator, is the preserver, is the destroyer and so these three separate entities that people worship Guru Sahib is saying they also reside in that house in other words when you go to that house you don't have to worry about the separateness you don't have to worry about the trini the trinity so um, Christianity has its own trinity but we have our ache an ache ache onkar so is this actually referring more to Ekonkar than basically saying the prevalent the force of that time was let's focus on these so you'll see mandars of Brahma and Mandar of Brahma Tirnini again that's a different context there. Yeah. Shiv the Mandar again. So but the whole point being don't don't focus your energies on these three because don't worry about three them. Are also focusing they're on the Ekonkar. Absolutely the aspects of that, these are representations of that force. And so tune into that. You know, tune into that home that contains all this. Yeah, what I find in Gurbani is that Guruji takes the reality of God and his creation and he also takes gods, goddesses, all these concepts that people have, virtual reality if you will, <laughs> and, he, and he treats them all together. He says it doesn't matter whether it's real, whether it's in your mind, as long as it's yeah. in your mind, it's still part of it, right? right. Exactly. right. Take all those things and focus and, and, and make them all point to the one reality. Yes. Whether yes. you come to him through thinking of him as Brahma, Shiva, whatever, all of it is part of that symphony right. that is hook up. Right. So whether it's in the physical world or whether it's in people's minds, because eventually it's all your mind, right? Yeah. Eventually it's all your mind. You yeah. In what is your mind, you have to make it get there. And if, if in your mind you have real things or virtual things, it doesn't matter. Combine them all and let's think of just why you and let's take us all on that path. That and you know what? The, the common factor is devotion. 
the common factor is love and that's why you may have four doors in Harmandir Sahib but that pathway is that of love, of devotion. So doesn't matter how you're approaching it but Guru Sahib for us that are following the path of Sikhi is pointing us to that one, to that Ekonkar, to that to that one that contains all of these. It's actually quite beautiful about Gurbani and the language, the, uh, the principle, the concept that existing in that time, he would use that concept but to explain his, what he wanted to explain to Yes. And many religions get into very forcefully, at least the way they are practiced by churches right. and all, they get into very much, this is our real thing and this is false, that's the right. other guys and that's all a lie and this is a reality. Mm -hmm. And he includes that all, he says it doesn't matter, it matter what people thought, this is the way you should, this is what the reality you should see in it. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't, includes yeah. gods, goddesses, everything, that doesn't mean he believes in gods and goddesses, yeah. but he says if that's in your mind, Make so be it. Yeah. So be so be it. Doesn't matter. Like Doesn't condemn. Concepts of God and goddesses are, you know, they are, they are all tied up in Maya. If you read all the stories, then you know they 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 are, they are unfaithful, <laughs> sexual affair. They have all those things. And they fall. The concept and <laughs> of God is it is short of divine. Exactly. It is all tied up in Maya. Right. So he says gods and goddesses are also under the influence of Maya. But the real Vahigru is beyond all they that. They are beyond so all of this. He uses all that to still take you there. <laughs> and and, and, and he does it very graciously and gracefully without condemning anything. I mean, it's yeah. like he becomes a part of that group and yeah. then it's like, okay, let me guide you. Let me just steer you. Whether it's yeah. using the language, uh, yeah. using the dressing of the time. I think yeah. even if you look at Quran, you see Guru Nanak Sahib actually being dressed like a Muslim when right. that land. Yeah. Just to kind of get the point across, okay, I'm part of you and now I'm going to teach you. Explain this principle, <laughs> which is probably a little different from what you've heard before. And and that's really what this party is about. He he includes all the all the representations, all the prevalent notions, all the concepts, and then points us to Keopat Shah. He's the true king. He's the and 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 what is and how is everything in rhythm? Everything is in the hukam. Everything is bound by the hukam. Yeah, I, I think some kind, some folks had actually even mentioned that you know, Kaibari, you find it contradictory. And then you'll say in in Japji Sahib you'll also say Ketya Khani Ketya Bani Ketya Patari. So uh, the point was not the, the real concept was Ketya Khani Ketya Bani Ketya Patarin, but I think he the the prevalent concept of Char Khani I guess he was not deriding it. We exactly. start with that and then slowly yeah. graduate or gradually move folks in that direction. And sometimes he does it with humor, like yeah. he did uh, in Haridwar, and sometimes he does it uh, uh, just by defying the norms and sometimes he does it by just including everything and saying hey let me show you where this all leads. I mean, uh, actually uh, Guru Nanak Pasha's uh, style of actually operation has is so phenomenal. I think it's, that it's just amazing. It's, it's amazing. I mean just the Udasis and going to so many different lands with different languages and different ways of life and explaining this, and, this and main concept and starting the dialogue with them, exactly. dialoguing with them, yes. you know, and, and, and see that's what's important, not condemning, not putting down, not deriding, um, not fighting over, you know, who's yeah, right, who's wrong. humble, right? I mean, if yeah. you look at it, he will call himself Betala in his own body. Absolutely. I mean, and and he's, yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And so similarly the next Gahave in the in the Asana Bate, you know, in sitting on his throne in the Rasan Bate, Devta and Danale surrounded by all the Devtas, he, the, he's also there. You'll, you'll find him there as well. Gave Siddh Samadhi and, the, and now he makes a shift and says all those Siddhas who have attained, um, who've conquered their senses, who have gone into Samadhi, Siddh Samadhi and the Gavan Sad Vichare, even those people who are who are reflecting like we are, you know, sad vichare, who are reflecting on the goodness, who are having a dialogue, who are having a conversation about it. They, those people are also there. In other words, there is acceptance for, for remembrance, there is acceptance f for all kinds of ways of becoming a part of that symphony, if you will, becoming a part of that rhythm, of tuning into that nad. Kav, Gavan Jati Sati Santoki, Gave Veer Karare. So Jatis are again people who have really attained uh, full control over their body. Satis are people who have sacrificed themselves. Santokis are those who are very content. Gave Veer Karare, the courageous, the brave ones, they're all there. 
gave gavan pandit padan rakhi sir the wise pandits who read from the scriptures jug jug veda nale who have uh, read and understood the vedas from different the centuries the vedas different vedas came out were, were written in different centuries so all these all these are there in that abode let me tell you what all there is right this is everything that nichkar that that door that abode contains everything because it is the repository the fountain head the container of everything and yet with all of this it is one गावे पंडित पढ़न रखी सर जुग जुग वेदा नाले गावे मोहनिया मन मोहन सुरगा माच प्याले मोहन जी वाज रिफरिंग टू दिस ब्यूटीफुल अप्सराज यू नो दैट ही वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ सम ऑफ द देवताज फेल सो देयर देयर दिस ब्यूटीफुल विमेन यू नो हु बिकेम द डाउनफॉल ऑफ द ऋषिज एंड द एंड 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 चांटेड द माइन मन मोहन यू नो हु ऑल दिस दिस these beautiful uh, uh, entities that 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 are so appealing to the mind surga mach pyale they're all there they they're um, uh, they sing they they they, are, they sing the praises gavan ratan upay tere all the jewels that you seek so there there are some stories there are some myth mythological stories around these jewels and how they were attained and atsat tirat nale and all the 68 tirats that people go to they are all contained in the one they are all part of that nad they are all part of that that rhythm gave jyot mahabal sura gave khani chare so um all the 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 warriors that that have fought through the through the ages and all the ways in which in which life happens there are the there's the womb there's the egg there's the earth there's the sweat these are the four ways in which life germinates life is created and just all of it is in that in that home that's where it emanates from gave khan mandal brahmanda kar kar rakhe sare the planets the solar systems all the galaxies that we are discovering now we are finding that that beyond everything that we knew no that thousands of other galaxies this is the latest i heard less than a week ago and they are all there in that ghar let me tell you you'll find them all there say to the no kahave jo to the power and han ji billions of galaxies billions of galaxies say to the no kahave say to the no gavan and then he says whoever whoever you bless becomes part of that rhythm path of that symphony jo jo tanu pan that today we are gathering here today we are discussing this vichar kar rahe hain it's part of the hukam it's part of that blessing that we are able to do it otherwise you know otherwise sometimes you come to the gurdwara and you don't even go and matha take or you just you know do your langar because the kirtan is 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 done like i was saying and you just meet people and you go back and you know you don't even get the opportunity of sitting down and concentrating and and listening because oh oh us din blessing nahi mili aegi so he says soi tud no gavan jo tud pavan jana nu tusi bless kita who have been ordained by you to sing your praises hor kete gavan se mai chitnavan he says after saying all this there are countless more i i can't even sit and recount all of them se mai chitnavan i don't know i i can't even make a count of all of them so he so he sada sat saheb sacha sach nahi but in the end everything is that one so he so he that one everything is contained everything is contained in that one entity for us that is ekonkar so he so he sada sat saheb and what is that so he so he that is forever true that is the law that is the that is the supreme entity so he so he sada sach hamesha sach sacha sachi nai and that's what naam is that is it's the essence of all of this the essence of all the goodness the essence of all this that you are seeking and singing and praising through different means and what is that happy it is there today hosi shall always be there happy hosi jaina just not going to go anywhere you know everyone comes and goes but this one stays rooted right there 
and has created this universe with all its magnificence and its beauty and its colors and its rhythms and, and music. Rangi Rangi Bhati there with all its colors, all its colorfulness. Rangi Rangi Bhati Kar Kar Jinsi Maya Jinopai. You've created this world. Kar Kar Jinsi Maya and the Maya within it that deludes us, that makes us get lost and that makes us get caught up in these different aspects and we cannot go beyond. We enjoy the music and yet it remains just to the level of enjoyment rather than getting completely immersed in it and becoming one with it and, and, and making it a part of, part of us. You've created this and you, you watch over it and so I think I'm back. Whatever you do, it's your greatness. And here is the key to this. We don't understand. We don't understand the hukam. It's not up to us to get it. And all of these entities, all of these things that he's mentioned are bound by the hukam. They are contained in the hukam. There is the naam, which is the essence of all of this. Is the concept here more around whatever he wants, he does. Nobody else has any, can control him or order him in any way. Yes, that is, that's all, that's part of it. I was going to say that, yes, De definitely. You cannot do anything. You cannot change it. You cannot control it. You cannot, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. And so submit to it, accept it, surrender. And when you do that, here is what I got out of it. And when you accept that hukam, you are in that house. That is the sodar, accepting the hukam and that is the sokar where there is now. It is through acceptance of the hukam and surrender to that hukam is how you will reach that home where there are all these melodies and all this beauty and all the devtas and all the devis and all the siddhas and the dialogue makers and seekers are all there. That's where they land through hukam, through acceptance. Yeah? That's what I got out of it. This body, as you said, is repeated three times in the Guru Granth Sahib. It's obviously a very important one. Very important one. And it's a very twice, basic twice, 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 twice in our nith name. Twice in the nith name. Twice in the Yeah. Twice in our nith name. Once in the morning, once at night. So I want to share with you what um, one of uh, the learned um, scholars that came to uh, IJS camp way back when told us about Pat Sahib and Pat Sahib. This was his interpretation. And he said, in, in the morning, you say you are the king, so Pat Sahib, Sahib, Pat Sahib, right? You are the king, you are the emperor. And at the end of the day, you've gone through the day and your honor has been kept. And at that time, you say, so Pat Sahib, you are the keeper of my honor. At the end of the day, you have preserved me. I, I, think the, I think they are just in the, in the well, I just I wanted to share I think that. It's poetry and in the context of different chant, the different style. But it's a, it, it was something. You know, the beat has to be a little different, so they just adjusted. No, but which was something that appealed to me. That at, end of, at the end of the day, you are thanking Vaheguru for taking care of your honor. And that was his interpretation, as I said. Okay. But, Few verses that have come in Gurbani multiple times, and yes. very often the way they have been written or spelled is different. It's spelled differently. Guru Sahib has the luxury of doing whatever he wants to do. We don't have the luxury of changing it. We don't the have. other thing is, you know, in those days, spellings were not firm. Yes. And most of these things went orally. So when they, when they recited it, and, and yes. you know, yes. Sahib wrote it yes. down, yes. And depending on the chant, depending on the time, they were just pronouncing it, and then the, and he just wrote whatever it could be, and you know, the spellings were very fluid in those days. And, and so all you go in the older kind of books if you read them. So the same word is spelled many different ways. Now everything has gotten formed over time. But but in Gurbani there's another aspect that when it's spelled differently, it has a different nuance. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Many times yeah, it doesn't yeah. Here Pat Sahib definitely has a different nuance. 
but this honor, but this, you know? It could be intense or it could be could be. Could be. Exactly. So, so he has given us. Even yes. if it was we don't know the good intention. So it's really yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And that's the thing with poetry, you can you can read so many levels in yeah. it. Different people can see different. And that's part of the reason for this because this is not absolute, this is this inspiring. Is exactly. Spiritual. Yeah. Is and if it evokes, it yeah. It also depends on yeah, your state and yeah, different times in your life you it evokes different responses and reveals reveals different meanings to you. Yeah, so many levels of meaning. So many, yeah. It's so pithy. Gurbani is so pithy. So, so we know where that house is, where the door is, and now it's up to us to become a part of that that space, that convergence. Bye, Guruji ka khalsa. Bye, Guruji ki fateh. Thank you. So we'll take a five minutes and short break. I'm sorry, you have something to say. I just wanted to ask a question. Anjay. Sure. So